everybody, Drone Tech here. Uh, I just had to do a video on this topic. Um, the last few days, and really the last few weeks, I've heard over and over again in the media about QAnon and how big of a threat they are. Oh, Tr Trump won't condemn them. Oh, this is this is very scary. Uh, these these guys are inspiring violence, and I and I've heard that over and over again from the media, and they're hysterical about it. Uh, I'll admit I know nothing about them. I know nothing about really Anonymous or QAnon. As far as I know, there's Q and then there's Anonymous and there's QAnon and somehow these groups are, are linked. I don't really know. Uh, but what I do know is that it's never been this hysterical uh, fear mongering from the media about it until just the last few weeks. I do think it's interesting that Anonymous during the Bush years was very popular with the media because Anonymous was leaking stuff about the Bush administration and Republicans. And it was all good back then. But then, of course, it started happening to Democrats, and that's when it became this big controversy and the media started really speaking out against it. They were fine when it was against their political opposition. But as soon as it came around to them, the rules have to change, which is pretty typical with the Democrats. So I wanted to go and look and just see what violence, because the media keeps claiming, uh, and apparently the FBI uh, is saying, oh, these are dangerous guys, lots of violence inspired by QAnon. And I'm sitting here thinking, what about all this other violence that's been in, that I'm witnessing every day? You know, from Antifa or BLM or just from random Democrats like the Bernie supporter who shot up the Republican ba baseball game. Who incited that? Nobody seems concerned with that. So we're all supposed to be concerned about QAnon. I looked up what violence has QAnon inspired? And we have a few different links here. So I just want to kind of go through them and just show you how absurd, how absolutely absurd this is. I mean, it's pure. This is like a psyops operation or something. So it starts out, PolitiFact, QAnon hoax has been linked to violence. Fox News' Greg Gutfield falsely claimed it hasn't. And you'll see how often they just throw out hoax, conspiracy theory. They throw out these buzzwords to, to attack and, and make this group seem very dangerous. Um, it says QAnon is a baseless conspiracy theory. The FBI has also identified it as a potential domestic terrorist threat and has been linked to multiple instances of violence. Oh, okay, well guess I was wrong. I mean, there, there must be, there must have been some attacks or something that happened. I just never heard about it. So, I mean, you get into the article here and you would expect that right away because it, it starts right off that, oh, Greg Gutfield's claiming there's no violence, QAnon violence. He's so wrong. He's so wrong. And then the article just goes on to explain what QAnon is. It's a hoax. It's a fringe conspiracy theory. It's got symbols and paraphernalia that is spotted at Trump rallies and events. And then in this paragraph, it says again, it's, it's, ensure, it's assuring us on some occasions the hoax has helped spur its followers to violence. Okay, they keep saying that. And yet I've yet to see these examples of violence. Uh, okay, so now we're FBI uh, and other groups have linked QAnon to violence. Oh, okay, here we are. Okay, so there's an FBI memo that uh, detailed multiple cases in which violent incidents or the threat of violence inspired by QAnon and other conspiratorial beliefs led to it. And other conspiratorial beliefs. Okay, thought this was about QAnon, but now apparently they're adding in other conspiratorial beliefs. The FBI assesses these conspiracy theories very likely will emerge, spread, and evolve into modern information marketplace, occasionally <clears throat> driving both groups and individual extremists to carry out criminal or violent acts. Okay, that, again, okay, so that's weird because as far as I'm concerned, uh, critical race theory, um, systemic racism, all these things are essentially conspiracy theories. Hands up, don't shoot, a conspiracy theory. It, it didn't have any factual backing, and yet, to this day, it's driving violence, and it's driving destruction and death. And yet, there's nothing in here, There's you don't ever hear anything from the media or the FBI or anything about that. That doesn't seem to matter. The conspiracies that are driving, or the extreme ideologies that are driving these groups, that are committing violence right in front of us every day. The media ignores it. But anybody knows, all of you guys know, you can get on social media on Twitter or Facebook and you see this violence every day. Guys like Andy No cover it every day and it's there. So just because the media doesn't cover it doesn't mean it doesn't happen. But it's like they act like it. They just kind of act like that's how it is. Like, oh, well, we're not reporting it. So it essentially didn't happen. And all their reporting kind of revolves around that alternate reality, essentially. So going down this article, they still have not, as you can see, not listed... Any examples? Oh, but here we go. Examples of QAnon-linked violence. Finally, finally, about midway through the article, 
We can start to get some examples. Okay, I'm really interested to hear. And apparently it's research from Media Matters for America. Oh, okay. Well, that's a far-left Democrat Party group. Okay. So, <clears throat> those incidents of violence, potential violence or criminal activity include... In June, Massachusetts man led police on a chase through Massachusetts and New Hampshire with his five children in the car in a live stream Facebook event. The man discussed QAnon conspiracies. Okay, I don't don't really see what that has to do with the inspiration of violence or threats of violence. Just sounds like a guy took his kids in a car uh, on a police chase. You know, I, I, that, that sounds like just a crime that was committed. And that they're just tying QAnon to it loosely because the guy talked about it on Facebook. So let's go to the next one. That's bullshit. In April, an uh, Illinois woman was arrested in New York City for driving onto a pier with a car full of knives in an apparent attempt to reach a Navy hospital ship housing COVID-19 patients. In a live stream of her travels, the woman threatened to kill Joe Biden over claims of sex trafficking. She also posted about QAnon on Facebook before the incident. Okay, uh, this just sounds like another crazy, this is like, so June and, uh, and April, so this must have been the next year, so it's a full year before another one of these crazies comes around. I mean, she threatened to kill Joe Biden, big deal, everybody, who, who hasn't threatened to kill Trump? I mean, big profile, big name people have threatened to kill Trump. Uh, just because some crazy woman did it, uh, <laughs> in New York City one time, doesn't mean that QAnon is some, uh, big terrorist domestic terrorist threat to the country or is inspiring violence so another bullshit one just some random crime that they're loosely tying to QAnon in March of 2019 so I have to assume this is the next year so each year there's one person out of 250 million people in the country in March of 2019 a New York man killed uh, Francisco Cali a member of the prominent Gambino crime family <laughs> the man said the CIA had infiltrated the mafia. The incident came after the man requested an arrest of several high-profile Democrats. He supported QAnon during one of scrolled Q on the palm of his hand. So he killed a member of the Gambino crime family. That just seems another strange thing to include into this. I mean, crime families typically involve shooting and killing each other. It's not related to Q at all. Okay, so again, another just very, uh, it sounds like a crazy man. He scrawled Q on the palm of his hand. Come on. So we're going on to the next one. In January of 2019, so these must not be in order. A Seattle, I don't know why they wouldn't be. A Seattle man was arrested for allegedly killing his brother with a sword. That sounds, uh, why do all of the, every single one of their examples sounds like a, just a complete nut job. Th that they're just, oh, this is a nut job. We'll just tie it to our political opposition. Which is something they never do to their to the other side, right? There's plenty of nut jobs out there we could pick out of Antifa and BLM and be like, oh, that's let's tie him to Democrats. They never do that. That's how dishonest this is. So now they're going back another year here to 2018. A Nevada man in an armored truck blocked traffic on a bridge near Hoover Dam, demanding the release of a government document and fleeing after a standoff police. Law enforcement found weapons in his car. The man discussed QAnon police after his arrest and cited them in letters he wrote from jail. I mean, okay, this is another crazy person who didn't do anything. Sounds like he was completely nonviolent, and he went to jail. I, again, this is like, the, how does any of this, what does any of this have to do with domestic terrorism or a threat to the country or something that Donald Trump has to condemn because of these random uh, four or five people over the course of several years in a country of 250 million people? I'm sorry, I keep saying 250 million people. It's actually 328 million at this point, I believe. So six people out of a country of 328 million people, and this is some sort of like serious domestic threat. Uh, I'm not buying it. It keeps going. QAnon has also been associated with various threats and other crimes, including vandalism. Threats and vandalism. Hmm, what does that sound like? It sounds a lot like Antifa and BLN to me, and that stuff's happening daily. And it's happening in huge mobs. Thousands of people are involved in this. Yeah, I just wanted to show you guys that, and it's something that's really bothering me right now because... Like I've said over and over in this video, we're watching all this actual violence, actual groups that the media and the Democrats run cover for say, oh, well, we can't blame them. It's just an idea. They come up with all these excuses and rationalizations for why, you know, the violence, the mass violence that's going on, uh, the left wing violence and the name of racial justice, whatever that is. And, and uh, anti-fascism using totally fascist tactics, you know, getting in mobs and uh basically uh threatening violence against people unless they accept your ideology 
You know, that's exactly what's going on across this country. And the media and the Democrats are just acting like that's not even happening. And if it is happening, uh, they've got all these excuses uh, for it. And then they turn around and they say the right and the Republicans are some sort of domestic terror threat because of this group, QAnon, that most of us know nothing about. And a handful of crazy people have been involved in random crimes that are loosely, if at all, connected to the QAnon conspiracy theory. That's about it for this episode. Please hit that like button, share, and subscribe. If you want to support this channel, you can do so by using one of the links in the description or pinned comment.